<laughs> oh boy, Bristol Baby sure did, did live up to their expectations this weekend. What a race. We were worried about weather. Could this race be rain shortened? We were worried about, well, not me. I was kind of excited about it. But everybody else and all the other drivers were worried about Kyle Busch, who got involved in a wreck on lap three, worked his way back up to get up to second. Truex gets wrecked. He's mad. and But, but more importantly, Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch's brother, Got to the win, which will put him into the playoffs for 2018. I think he was already in it anyway, but it just kind of guarantees him a spot in the playoffs. And so we had a lot of young drivers racing up front this week. We had Eric Jones doing pretty good. He was in the top 10, top 5 at least for most of the day. Chase Elliott leading you know, way over 100 laps. It looked like he was the favorite to win it right uh, at sunset when the sun was going down didn't work out as the track change and then we got Clint Boyer up in there so this was kind of a perfect race overall we had a bunch of different leaders uh, a new winner which is what everybody wants to see now obviously I wanted to see Kyle Busch win a big three driver because I'm a Kyle Busch fan but it was overall a pretty good race uh, you know Kai uh, let me talk about this uh, wreck that happened with Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch most like or not most like Kyle Busch actually it, it was his fault between Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch uh, Kyle Busch basically went up the track and then wrecked Martin Truex Jr. There's nothing to say about it. I, I don't think it was on purpose. I'm pretty sure it was not on purpose. I'm sure, I'm sure people that don't like Kyle Busch will say otherwise just because they don't like Kyle Busch. But anybody who really saw that wreck, they know that Kyle Busch did not purposely wreck another driver for basically no reason. So it was an accident. It was 100% Kyle Busch's fault. It also took out the number seven car, I believe, of J.J. Yelly. Might have been a different driver. Uh, so that, that was a bit of an interesting situation. Uh, Truex Jr. obviously very upset, throwing his helmet in the car, throwing his gloves in the car, kicking the car. So uh, very upset Martin Truex Jr. makes sense. It's short track racing, and he got taken out, and he could have done really good. Uh, also, J.J. Jimmy Johnson, seven-time champ, was doing pretty good. I thought he was going to wreck Eric Jones there <laughs> uh, for the for, for you know, for third place uh, right there at the end because you know how Johnson is. He's desperate for a win right now, and he really needs to get that win. So it was very interesting. We saw a lot of big-name drivers up there once again. Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott. This was probably one of the best races that we've seen in a while, but I do have to say something about Kyle Busch. That was a Dale Earnhardt move. I have never seen anybody it, since I started watching it. Now, it's happened before, but since I started watching it live, I've, ne I've never seen it live happening where a driver gets wrecked on lap three or very early in the race and goes three laps down, runs his way back up, passes the leader, goes two laps down, plans it just perfectly to get back on the lead lap and get up into the top three. Now Kyle, which obviously got involved in another incident later on, taking out, taking him out of the race, uh, or not out, but you know, finishing 20th, but just the fact that he actually got that far up and could have won, that's just, that's just something amazing. I'm also going to talk a little bit about Kyle Larson, driver of the number 42. Obviously very good at Bristol. And uh, he almost got that win there earlier this year. But Kyle Busch knocked him out the way with three laps to go, so therefore it doesn't count as a win. He got second place, but uh, same thing with him today. He lost to another Bush. He lost, to, uh, not to Kyle Busch this time, he lost to Kurt Busch. <laughs> um, and, you know, it looked like Larson was going to get him since he had fresher tires, but, you know, Hey, Kurt Busch is a really good driver. He obviously knew how to get around, and Kurt Busch will win it again. That's his first win since the 2017 Daytona 500. And also, most likely, he will not be racing with Stuart Haas next year, according to a report. That's not 100% true, but it's usually right. The, the, the website that that's on, it's usually correct. So most likely, he's not going to be racing for Stuart Haas Racing next year. So to get that win for him has really got to boost up his momentum. And uh, we could see him as a threat in the playoffs. Maybe not as championship contender yet, but I uh, definitely would want to watch him. Let me go back to what Chase Elliott said. Chase Elliott said, we need more short tracks, and this is why I love it. We need more of these because it's fun to race at. I 100% uh, agree. We need more short tracks. we got to get them in there somehow. We need to get some more short track races and not tracks like Richmond. Richmond doesn't really count because that's nothing like a Martinsville or a Bristol. So we need to scratch Richmond. Keep it because it's a short track. But... Scratch that out. Let's not let's not try to get tracks like Richmond. We need to get tracks like Martinsville, like a paperclip, or something like that. And uh, that would be very interesting. And that that's you know interesting thing that he said. 
So let's think about something else. Let's go back to the playoffs. Two more races. Remember this. Two more races until the playoffs. Okay, we got Darlington, Indianapolis. I'll talk about Indianapolis a little bit later, but let me talk about Darlington. This is a race that I think is also very interesting. This is another one of my favorite races of the year, usually. I do love Darlington. It usually creates very exciting racing. I cannot wait for Darlington. But you never really know at Darlington. You know, Bush has obviously got wins there. Harvick's got a win there. It's it's interesting to see those two battle it out. It's, once again, a mile and a half racetrack. But it, it, it kind of drives like a short track since you have the groove. You have to let off the gas. It's a very interesting racetrack. Like they say, I believe it's the track too tough to tame. So uh, we'll see how many Darlington stripes there are uh, running up into that wall. It should be very interesting to see that. Also, then we got Indianapolis, and we all know how good Kyle Busch usually runs there. Uh, the past three, four years, he's dominated that race. He did not win it last year. He got in a wreck with Truex last year while he was leading at Indianapolis. So obviously you want to count him as a big threat. But uh, we'll worry about that after Darlington. But we're going to get off week this week, so... We got some time to debrief about what happened. But once again, just a very, very interesting race this week at Bristol. Uh, once again, we had weather going on. We had all sorts of drivers leading. We had all sorts of drivers contending for the win. We had a couple of cautions there at the end, which kind of diced things up. So a very interesting race at Bristol. Hopefully, ticket sales go back up. Now, I know we had rain. It was forecasted the rain this week for the Bristol race, which might have killed some of the attendance. But we had a... A, a fair amount of people there but that was definitely not enough we need to get more people at bristol i, mean, I don't really know how you can do that but i think this race will obviously help out with that uh bristol event and going to the bristol racetrack but anyway uh that's pretty much about all i have to say about the bristol race we get a week off then we're going to darlington then we're going to indianapolis we'll talk about that later and uh, anyway anyway that's about it and if you're not first you're last